Hi, my name is Tom and you are at level 28 in mastering Einstein special relativity. This is the B level. We are talking about length contraction, classic length contraction and real world length contraction. If you would take a movie or a picture, we will dive into a little bit more detail than the A level by using the space time diagram, which was introduced in level 26. Let's get into it. So where is my, there, there we are. So this was the setup I introduced in level A. We have two trains and both of them are exactly the same length when they are at rest, both of them. And the blue train will be traveling at 80% of the speed of light to the right, which is pretty fast. Eh? It's about six times around the world each second. And let's see the animation, what happens if that train goes that fast. This is the animation. The train will have shrunken, is that right? It shrinked, shrunk, shrunk. It became a little bit shorter, right? 12 meters, not 20 meters. And this is what we will call classic length contraction. And if you want to know the mathematics behind it, this is the equation. You multiply the original length 20 with the square root of 1 minus v squared, v over c squared, and then you will get 12 meters. So this is length contraction. The c level we will derive these equations, etc. But for now, just believe that this is the way to calculate it. So what if we would fill the train and have all kinds of signal uh, posts next to the track so we can actually see on the picture where the front and the back of the train is so we know how long it is. It should be 12, right? No, it will not be. Let's look at the real train length contraction. In this case, the train is coming at you and then moving away. And this is what we will see. 60 coming at you, 6.666 leaving away from you. This is what we saw on the previous level. So we'll do it again. It's a 20 meter long train, which will actually shrink down to 12 meters, but your video, your telescope will tell you 60, and then suddenly it's 6.66666. That's what's happening. So we get the spiritual conversation where the observer tells the person in the train, we agree that it was 20. Yes, we were there. But I saw you coming at me in a train at 60 meters. I saw you leaving in a train 6.66666. And Einstein tells me it's just 12. And then the person on the train might say the exact same thing. He said, no, this is what I saw. You must be delusional. So it's really, really crazy, this stuff. It will give you a headache. Let go of your intuition. Let's follow the math. Classic length contraction. How does this look like in the space-time diagram? Here, the red line is a stationary observer just traveling through time. The blue line is the train, the blue train traveling at 80% of the speed of light. So this is what it would look like, this animation in the space-time diagram. And Einstein will tell us the blue train is shorter. It will be 12 meters. So if I put in these lines, these guidelines, then Event number one is the one at the location of the stationary train, the non-moving train. Uh, the telescope is also there, right? It's at the non-moving train. And let's say in this case, we pick time to be 50 seconds on the clock of observer one. So the clock in the brown train. Event number two will be the back of the train at that same moment in time. Um, and it will be somewhere at the location E2. And the front of the train will be at E number three, right? So we have three events from the perspective of the non-moving train. 
This is 20 meters and this is the contracted length, 12 meters. This is what happens if you plot it in a space-time diagram. This is the equation. You can derive this easily, I would say. It's not that difficult from the Lorentz transformation. And I think we will do this in the C level as well. Now we are going to make it real world, right? So here again, we have our red stationary train with event number one and our moving blue train. And I'm going to introduce two more events. I'm going to put in a line, projection line, guideline, exactly at 45 degrees. And this is the travel line uh, along the light travels from the train back to the telescope in the non-moving train. So event number four is light emitted by the back of the train traveling back to the telescope at event number one. Event number five is light traveling from the front of the moving train back to the telescope of the non-moving train. And then you will see that if you have, if you took a picture and you know what the location is of event number four and you know what the location is of event number five, you will not see 12 meters. You will see 6.66666. A real world train moving away from you is even smaller than the classic length contraction. And you can calculate it by taking the already contracted length and divide it by one plus V over C, which is in this case 0.8. One plus 0.8. The train coming at you appear to be much bigger. Why is that? Well, let's look at a train coming at you instead of moving away from you. Now I picked event number six. This is when the clock in the non-moving train is minus 20 seconds. Again, I put down a projection line, 45 degrees, and I intersect it with the guidelines of the front and the back of the train, giving me event number nine and event number 10. Event number six is the telescope at minus 20. Event number nine is the front of the train where light starts to travel back to the telescope. And event number 10 is where light from the back of the train starts traveling to my telescope. And if these arrive at the same time in event number six, I will see event, the locations of event number nine and 10. And if you take the difference, you will see a difference of 60 meters. 60, not 20, not 12, not 6.666, but 60. This is what you will see. And if you want to calculate it, you will have to take the moving length or the contracted length. I think I called it contracted length in the previous slides, you know, the 12, and you divide it by one minus V over C. And the other equation when it's moving away is plus, but now it's minus, so it's one, minus 0.8. So you divide the length of 12 by 0.2. And if you divide 12 by 0.2, you will get 60 meters. Here you see it all in one picture. And now you understand why we need to build up this picture because otherwise you get lost in all the lines, all the events, all the projection lines. But here it is. And I've created this online. You can just go there. If you now go to this website, and I will show you the website in a second, you can actually see these uh, 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 space-time diagram and you can use your cursor to change perspective. Let's go there. So here it is. Here you see now the red line, observer one, the blue line, observer two. You see the back and the front of the trains. And here is a perspective slider. You can just take your mouse and pull it back to how does this look in the world of observer two? How does it look in the world of observer one? So you can play with it back and forth, back and forth. You can even change the speed. You know, we talked about a train moving at 
80% of the speed of light, but I can also slow them down. I can even slow them down all the way to not moving at all. And then the back of the train and the front of the train is always at the same location where the stationary train is. So red and blue are just on top of each other. And when you go all the way to the speed of light, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, then everything just collapses. I'm not even sure if my equations are set up for this. So go to 0.99999, not 1, because then we will hit singularities, I guess. But here you can also zoom in. You can pan, uh, uh, you can see E1, event number two, event number three, event number four, five. You can see the projection lines. You can see that the difference of the uh, length moving away is this. This is the actual length due to uh, Einstein. And you can also do this for the train coming at you. This is event number nine, event number 10. So this is the 60 meters, etc., uh, etc. Et so I hope you find this useful. I enjoyed it very much creating this online and uh, able to share with everyone. Uh, this is just uber cool. I mean, space-time diagram is so intuitive, so much more easy than using the math. So yeah, this is it. So I want to thank you. I'm going to switch back to uh, uh, the slides and see. Yeah, if you want to learn more about this stuff, you can uh, search for Perel, Terrell, Penrose, and Lampa. But here are my other videos on uh, special relativity. I'm building it up from the ground up, first 18 levels, next batch of levels, all the way to 34, the twin paradox. We are now at 28, so you're well on your way. Um, and in the next level, well, you can follow the green. That's just the headlines. But if you want to really do this length contraction stuff and want to do the mathematics behind it, I invite you to look at level number C, level number 28C. And there we will do the actual math. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.